I did the same video last year, so in the spirit of the holidays, I figured we'd do it again. Last year I got to be a bit more focused on some potential January transfers, including Ferran Torres. But this year, due to words from Juan Laporta and Jordi Cruyff, kool have kind of been told that the purse strings are going to be a bit tighter this year. It might be a bit too ambitious to put expensive transfers on the wish list. Now I will say that Messi winning the World Cup already does kind of feel like when you accidentally find out what your big gift was going to be before the holiday. Oh yeah, that never happened and my mother still doesn't bring it up. But I'm not sure how much room most kool aids have to ask for other things. But because Messi is a PSG player, while he is a major part of FC Barcelona's history, that doesn't really affect Xavi's wish list for 2023. So let's have some fun and try to figure out what Xavi and the club FC Barcelona, I think those interests are pretty well paired, would like to see in 2023. Let's start with winning La Liga. It's the premier competition that both Xavi in recent days has said, Laporta has equated it. I think the whole club, the whole vibe, especially with Barcelona restarting play at first in the table, and you know that All I Want For Christmas Is My Two Front Teeth or the more popular All I Want For Christmas Is You songs? Well, if you summed up Xavi's wants, it sounds like it starts and ends with winning La Liga, so I'm going to trust the manager on this one. He did admit just the other day that the Liga is also the priority. It's the one competition that validates and proves that Barcelona are on the right track. And as any kool aids older than 50 will tell you, don't ever take La Liga for granted. And I'm not saying that the Copa del Rey, the Spanish Super Cup, or the Europa League don't matter as much, but clearly the club has its priorities, and I think La Liga should rightly be the priority. I'll care about the Europa League just like the rest of you, and I don't take that competition for granted either. There's a lot of competition there, and we've had seen some really good teams win it in recent seasons. But as I keep reiterating, La Liga is a priority, La Liga is a big one, and piping Real Madrid, the rivals for that one, well, yeah. That's a big one. The second thing I think is start negotiations with Busquets' successor, or at least one in the near future, if not necessarily the far future. And this one also starts and ends with expectations about what you're asking for. Not to blame kids here, but when you were a kid and you asked for something that was just a bit too expensive, or you knew it was outside your parents' price range, well I think that's kind of on you for getting disappointed if you didn't get it that holiday. And that's exactly how I feel about asking for Busquets' successor. I'm hoping there's an Enzo Fernandez or a Zubamendi or even Alan Varela out in the driveway on Christmas morning, and that might be a bit too overzealous. But there could be some news. For quite a few months now, Barca has been linked with injured but upcoming free agent N'Golo Conte, who can sign a pre-contract in January. He'll be 32, and when it's time to sign a new deal, and depending on the number and how that physical goes, this isn't a bad idea at all. He's two years younger than Busquets and has a lot less miles on those legs, believe it or not. Remember, his rise to the top was a bit later than the Spaniards, so I'm hoping that he still has a bit left in the tank. And at the right number, he is still one of the best at his position, and could be the perfect stopgap until Barca can save up the money for the real young successor. That also gives Pedri and Gabi two more years to show you how they would fit with a new pivot, if Barcelona do indeed want to continue on with the same plan A style and system. I think the next thing that's reasonable to ask for is fortifying Frankie De Jong's spot in the squad. Which does kind of bring us to that second thing that you kind of asked for. This is more like when talking about individual players, I think stocking stuffers or something like that. I thought there was a lot of different players to make a wish upon. Like Dembele coming back okay from the World Cup after that poor final. Or hope for continued goals from Lewandowski. Or wish for continued progress from Pedri, Gabi, Balde. Or Ansu Fati continuing his return back to the top. I could go on for a while, but I had to specifically make some kind of wish or plea about Frankie de Jong. It's always been just a little underwhelming in Catalonia, so it's probably a bit too ambitious to ask for things to finally really click for de Jong, but the two months before the break were really promising. I think more importantly, how we can answer the question, will he take that wage reduction? Manchester United seem to also be in the holiday spirit and are rumored to have put de Jong back on their wish list, but it seems like he doesn't want to go anywhere and Barca could use him until they have some money again. It's a bit hyperbolic to say that Frankie de Jong, or the best version of Frankie de Jong, could help decide the Liga, but certainly having him in Barcelona's midfield would go a long way in doing that. And usually I do things in fives, but because of Barcelona's financial situation, I can really only ask for four things this time around for 2023, at least till the summertime, and then we'll ask for a few other things. But for the springtime, at least, the last thing has to be keeping everybody healthy. Keeping all your players, especially the important ones, on the field, well, that's what's most essential to winning trophies. Barcelona aren't as deep as other big clubs in the world, a point that many kool can point to as to what has kept Barcelona from dealing with one or two injuries, like the one to Ron Araujo this year. Getting Araujo back healthy would go a long way to Xavi and the club's goals of trophies. It's a fair excuse, probably excuse number two, three, or four on the list, but Araujo's injury is a fair excuse as to why Barcelona are not in the Champions League still. Looking on the bright side of things though, Barcelona actually did have some pretty good fortune coming out of the World Cup. While no Barcelona player did win that, it went to a former one in Messi of course, apparently no one got hurt or injured for any long amount of time at the World Cup, and that's great news. 
And aside from Memphis Depay, there really haven't been any major injuries around the Camp No this year either. Everything's happened on international duty. So let's hope things stay that way. That the coaching staff and the medical staff and the cooks and everybody around FC Barcelona are able to keep those players healthy for the spring for some trophies. As has kind of been the theme here, it was a little more fun last year, and I hope it's more fun next year when I could give you 50 names that I would love to put on a wish list. But because of those financial limitations, this is probably going to be one of the duller, sadder holiday seasons, I have to tell you. That said, I do have my wish list, and my wish list is a bit easier to fulfill than I think FC Barcelona's is. Of course, mine is subscribing, sharing this content, and helping other people see the content that I'm trying to make for all of you. But most importantly, for you, I hope this is on your wish list, I hope you have a really healthy and happy holiday with family and friends and everybody else in your world. And as always, I'll see you for the next one in Forza Barca.